Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy pandemic, and welcome to Kicker Rocks Podcast, Two Drink Minimum. In this episode, it's Sergio and I getting together, well, remotely getting together and catching up. Sergio tells me about his recent trip with Tony and others to the Netherlands for Filmapalooza and other touristy things. It's pretty exciting, and uh, we nerd out a little bit, uh, just as a forewarning, because we haven't talked to each other in a while, and we love each other, and we love you, and we thank you for tuning in. So kick back, relax, have a drink with us, and enjoy. Action. <laughs> still still got to say action. I love it. Uh, Sergio. Bill. <laughs> and that's it. And to everybody else listening, uh, cheers. Um, clink, clink, clink. We can't do this. We're, we're doing this uh, podcast cheers. remotely. Yeah, there you go. There's a little ice right there. I'll do mine. We'll, we'll shake yeah. right there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Delicious. Well, it is a... Uh, it is a it is a Friday night here in in pandemic land, and uh, we're quarantined, and uh, we haven't seen each other. Uh, Tony and JT are uh, out doing Friday night activities. They're not out. I don't know what they're doing. They're not like going out and they're, they're you know. staying in and making sure <laughs> they're they're staying at home, which is they're, pretty much where we're at. They're going to grocery stores and licking all the food. That's what they're doing right now. They're just purposely. Going out there defying everything. No, um, they're exactly. staying at home just like we're doing. They're unable to join us tonight. So it's me and Serge uh, coming to you uh, with, a, with a special edition of Two Drink Minimum. I should have said that from the beginning, right? What are they listening to? What did you guys tune into? I think, you know, if you clicked on the link, you probably know what you're listening to. But anyway, um, that's what the pandemic does, Serge. It makes us delirious. Uh, but the the reason that uh, we wanted to get together and talk is because I haven't seen you uh, or Tony or JT since the end of February because you guys, uh, you and Tony, meaning, uh, and your lovely significant significant others, uh, went across the seas to Rotterdam and other various areas, but Rotterdam specifically for Filmapalooza. Uh, yep. We had an entry in there. We were lucky enough, uh, if you remember, our Chicago entry into the 48-hour film project, uh, Aphrodite Inc. made it into Filmapalooza this year. So uh, that's the international festival for the winners, uh, the city winners of the 48-hour film project. So you guys got to see films and meet filmmakers from all around the world. Um, I don't think we ever really talk about it in too much detail on the podcast, so uh, and I'm curious because I want to hear all about this trip, and I haven't yet because I haven't seen you guys. I miss I miss you guys. I miss your Musk. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to you. Tell us. Tell us about this trip, and and then maybe like talk about a little bit about how it was coming back because you guys made it back right as this yeah. shutdown, if you want to call it that. It's not yeah. a complete shutdown, but right as everything was starting to happen here, right as the you know fit hit the shan, so to speak. So. Why don't yeah, you, uh, yeah, tell tell us, tell me, tell me, and and thus anybody else who's listening about Filmapalooza and then that trip back and what that was like. Yeah, it's pretty crazy because we, I feel, and generally speaking, we got really lucky in regards to our timing of the way Filmapalooza was planned. It just happened to be in Rotterdam, Netherlands. Um, those are plans that were etched in stone, like back in August of 2019. We found out that we won Best Film for Chicago for the 48-Hour Film Project. And immediately, like me, Tony, and then Rilla, uh, who is one of the actresses in our film and also who I am dating, and then Jess, who is Tony's wife, we were all like, yes, we're definitely going. So we had these plans, like, ready to go, set in stone since... I want to say we verbally said we were doing this September 2019. We booked everything December of 2019. And even like going into, you know, this year and just being excited about how cool we get to go on a vacation to Europe and do this fun trip. I want to say even up to about a week before our trip to the Netherlands, like in the U.S., it wasn't, there was no, there was no real concern. It was no, 
we knew there was something going on with the virus it, for the majority of, of people. It was, the only concern was this is happening in China. On a whim, I want to say it was the Friday before we were leaving, Rula actually said to me, hey, just so you know, my sister's telling me things are getting kind of crazy. You should go and, you know, visit your parents on the Saturday morning before our flight, which is at like 3 p.m., no, 6 p.m. on that Saturday. We were like, go hang out with your parents. I'm hearing that it's probably not a good idea to uh, be around anyone elderly once you, you know, for 14 days once you're in Europe. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. So I went and visited my parents on that Saturday morning. We ended up going to, you know, jumping on our flight. We flew into Amsterdam, immediately jumped on a train, went to Brussels, had such a good time. We were in Brussels for two days. We were in Bruges in Belgium for a day. Saw in Bruges. Bruges. Sorry, yeah. I, had, I had to say it. Had to say it. <laughs> you know, no, and I'm glad you did because that's something that we should definitely make sure we talk about, which is the movie In Bruges. If no one's ever seen it, it's a great movie. But yeah, so we, we, we were in Brussels, we were in Bruges, we ended up going to Rotterdam, and then I'll, we'll go back and we'll talk a little bit more about the Film Palooza experience. But we ended up being in Europe for about just under two weeks. We ended up flying back on Wednesday, uh, March 11th. And there was like no concern in the area we were at. Like it was Amsterdam. No one was even talking about it. No one was even talking about like virus or whatever. It was just like everything was really calm. Yeah. We get on our plane, we land in Chicago, and it was like like the world just like flipped 180 degrees. Um, I landed, my company called me literally th- like that morning. I had missed the phone call. I landed, I listened to the voicemail. My boss was talking to me saying, hey, just so you know, there's a lot going on. You probably shouldn't come into the office tomorrow. Give me a call. Tell me when you get back into Chicago. I called her up. She's like, hey, just so you know, our CEO said that she wants you to work from home for two weeks. Uh, Rula's company, they didn't do anything right away. She went into the office that Thursday morning, which was the 12th. She went into the office at 9 a.m. They had a meeting at 10 a.m., they basically told everyone from her company to stay at home. So they sent everyone home. And because she had been with me for a week and a half in Europe, her family was even like, hey, why don't you just stay at Sergio's house? So we, <laughs> yeah, so she ended up bringing all her equipment from work to my house. I had all my equipment. My company actually, like, literally curried. Wow. Cur- what, what is it? Courier? Courier? Whatever that is. They, yeah. had, they basically had a guy on a messenger bike ride all my, my computer, my like all the stuff on my desk to my house. And they put us on a quarantine on that Wednesday. And then by that Friday, it was literally like almost everybody in the city was going to be working from home. So yeah. it was it was just crazy. It was like we we <laughs> I haven't been in my office since um, February 28th. And I, yeah. work, and I work in an office every day. I like go to the office. I enjoy being in the office. And it was just weird to just be like 100% like, hey, you just work work from home. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean. Yeah, so it was it's, crazy. It's, it's weird. It's weird. And uh, yeah, it's just funny. I, I think <laughs> her family saying like, hey, you guys just, uh, you guys just stick together and uh, <laughs> yeah. infect yeah. each other. You guys just, yeah. They quarantined you too. That's pretty funny. Um yeah. yeah, and I'm I've been uh, remote for the last I think week here. Uh so my uh, my job is the same thing so I'm working from home as well. Um you know, we should really quick though say that uh, as weird as it is to work from home, I do want to give a shout out to everybody who's not able to do that. Uh mm-hmm. and it really is uh it's really hard out there right now for a lot of people, man, and uh just uh everybody stay safe. Um we're going to get through this, you know, it's uh, hopefully not going to be for too much longer, but, um, you know, for those of you out there who cannot work from home and you're still out there working or, or maybe you're not working, uh, hang in there, hang in there. We love you all. And, uh, use this podcast to get through. No, I'm kidding. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. But also definitely don't, um, 
look at that uh, Imagine video that's been circling around that some celebrities put together. That's also not what you should do. That's a bunch of trash. Did you see that search? <laughs> no, I have not. What are you referring oh my God. to? Don't don't even don't, don't, <laughs> don't look. It's a bunch of celebrities uh, basically started singing uh, different verses from the Beatles song "Imagine," okay, which is just really weird because that song kind of starts out on a sad note, right? Like, imagine there's no heaven. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, um, we have a pandemic right now. Let's <laughs> maybe you know maybe they should have done like a song that just made no sense, like a fun song. But I don't know. They tried. They tried to make it really serious. It seems like it's weird, but yeah, you can look it up. Look up Imagine <laughs> Celebrities or something. I think it went around on Twitter. It's uh, it's a little awkward in my opinion. Um, and it's a little like, all right, you know, we, thank you for saving us, Hollywood. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's me being cynical, I guess. Who knows? Sounds anyway, right. um, so yeah, it's been it's been wild. Where you know, um. We're on, uh, well, not a shutdown. A lot of people want to call it a complete shutdown. It's uh, it's close to it. It's close to it. Social distancing is the new phrase uh, of of the year. I think that everyone's going to take from this, right? Yeah. Um, I've never heard of that before. Uh, so there you go. Social distancing and um, this this whole uh, this whole situation with this uh, with this coronavirus. Uh, is uh is is just wild man it is uh it's just one of those things that i i hope we will never we've never experienced it in our lifetime and i hope we never will have to again because it's just yeah wild how something like that can shut down uh virtually everything you know there's a <laughs> virtually almost every industry uh is affected no one is not affected by this uh by this outbreak, so yeah. to speak. So it's just wild, strange time we live in. And uh, hopefully, everybody listening, you and yours, are, are staying safe and and uh, getting through it. I will say that uh, vodka helps. Vodka's good. It can help. It can. I'm, I had to. It's called two drink minimum. Why do you think you're listening to this? Come on. Hey, it's um, it's helping right now. What can I say? Yeah, you, you you're listening to this because you wanted to have a drink with us and, and have it and have a good time. So let's get off the morbid track, I guess. Uh, but uh, tell me about tell me about the trip in general. Maybe some of your favorite sites, and tell me about some of your favorite film palooza moments this year, man. Yeah, so uh, I think I think the first thing I know I mentioned the city uh, briefly a second ago, but the first thing is finally getting a chance to go to the city of Bruges, Belgium. Yes. And I know I know you get it, Bill, but I don't know right. if our listeners get it. Uh, mm-hmm. Little tip to all you listeners, if you ever get a chance, watch the movie in Bruges. It is uh, it's a great dark comedy, and I do mean dark because yeah. the, the, the preface is pretty much um, – I always have a hard time when I'm describing this film to people um, it, because I, I pretty much just say, yeah, it's about a hitman who accidentally killed a child. Uh, and, yeah. and then, and that's, as soon as you say that, it's just like, people just like, I don't want to watch that. Why would you watch yeah. that? Are you, are you, yeah. do you have a problem? And it's, yeah. and it's really hard to explain to people that like, no, it's funny. There's a bunch of funny parts to it, but in a <laughs> sad way. <laughs> And and then I lose them even more, right? Um, you're like he kills a kid, but stay with me. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. yeah. So yeah, even now I'm sure the listeners who are listening are like, well, why would I want to watch that story? Um, I guess if there's any Colin Farrell fans, like watch it because of him because his performance in this movie is great. Mm. It's it's uh, it's basically a really funny story about a hitman who accidentally killed a child and is forced to go to this small town in Belgium, which is described by his mob boss as a magical, beautiful place. And if you're ever there and which I finally have been able to be there, it is a quaint, beautiful, little charming. And like I use, I rarely use the word charming, but it is a charming city that almost feels like when you walk into, like when you just walk into the downtown area, it's like you just stepped into a town that has not left like 1920s. And it is just, <laughs> yeah. And they have like horse carriages there 
And it's this little main center with this nice, like, um, it's this nice little city center with a steeple that you can climb up to the bell tower. And then like right next to the main square is this really old church, which was one of the things that both Tony and I really wanted to see. And I was really glad that Rula for her, one of the charming things about going to this church was the fact that it's one of the only churches that have a, uh, this piece of cloth that it has the blood of Christ on there. So it's a piece of cloth that was taken from when he was crucified back when, whenever. This is the worst like, <laughs> like history of, <laughs> of religion right now. But it's they, they actually back, have... Back whenever. Back whenever. Uh, There's a little... Know, almost yeah. 2,000 years ago. Uh, almost according, 2,000 according years ago. Yeah. According to some. And there, and it's a piece of cloth that ha- it's like it's basically has the blood of Christ on it. And every day at noon... Right they allow people to go up and say a prayer in front of this piece of cloth. But that just gives you like, even that little story about this is a small church that has this cloth that has the blood of Christ. And blah, blah. that's how small, tiny little like village this is. And it's really cool to see. So if you ever get an opportunity to go to the town of Bruges in Belgium, yeah. do it. Cause it's just like, it's, it's a, it's just a very cool experience. And if you're, if religion isn't your thing, and chocolate is your thing, go oh. there because Belgium chocolate is like amazing chocolate. <laughs> that is a religious experience right there. Amen. Like around every other corner they have, and Tony can, can vouch for this, every, around every other corner there's like a little waffle shop. And these waffle shops will like, they'll literally make a waffle pastry thing for you and they'll drizzle like dark Belgium chocolate on top of it, powdered sugar and then some fruit. And it's just like, this is Ooh. this is the greatest thing you could ever have for like that two years. That sounds Euro. like have Sunday it. night <laughs> at the Miller House. Oh wait, what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> never mind. We've been drinking. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so, yeah, so <laughs> and, and back to like just uh, I, this is going to be basically Sergio talking for the next hour. But okay, so that was like that's, that was that's, Bruges. Fine. that's what the people want to hear. Yeah, trust right? me. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, so that was Bruges. Um, beautiful city we also stayed in brussels uh, which is a little bit bigger of a city that was very oh. cool too uh we uh one of the nights we ended up going to this really good dinner um where we uh, i guess a traditional belgium dish is um i forgot what they called it but once we finally got it we they kept on referring to it as a stew and we're like stew that sounds weird but then once we got it it was like this really good beef broth dish that had this, it was like chunks of beef that are simmered in this sauce. And it was like, it was amazingly delicious. But then what complements that dish are these things that are called like, um, uh, um, it was like uh, bit, bit, bitter balls or button balls or something like that. Mm -hmm. which are these like circular, if you ever been to like Long John Silver's and gotten one of those, uh, what do you call those? uh, uh, I forgot what they're called. uh, Hush puppies. Yes. Like hush puppies are pretty good, right? (laughs) They're circular, they're deep fried and they're delicious. Well, that's what these things, bitten balls, bitten balls. Uh, You'd get these things and then you think they're going to be the most amazing, delicious thing, but then they're, they're filled with this like seafood mush. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they're so disgusting. And like the first time we were introduced to these things, it's like me, me and Tony right away, we just grabbed them and we started eating them. And we're just, we're like, we look at each other. We look at Rula. Rula's like disgusted. We look at Jess. She's like, I'm not even going to try it because you guys look at her like throw up. And it was just like, yeah. well, yeah, let's stay away from these bitten balls or whatever they're called. But other than that, all the other food is great. So <laughs> nice. Yeah, so so that was that was Belgium, and then we ended up going up to Rotterdam. And this year's this year's forty eight. I have to admit, it was five days long. Normally, it was four days long, so this is the first time it was five days long. It was a good time, but I will admit, Rotterdam in March is cold and rainy. And oh, so not that much different from <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> yeah, and. That was pretty much the main thing that just kind of made the experience not as fun as we hoped. Sure. How, however, 
we did a couple of scourges. Like normally, Bill, you've been to these 48 and we're all yeah. about the workshops. We're all about the watching films. Absolutely. But we were like, hey, we're in Europe. We've traveled this far. Yeah. Let's, let's go check out other cities. And there are two cities that I want to uh, give shout out to because they were really, really cool. One was the the town of Kinderdijk, which is um, – it has 19 uh, windmills that are basically like 600 years old. And these are the original windmills that were part of – people don't know this – I didn't know this and I am like very poorly explaining the story. So please fact check everything I say. Okay. Basically, basically about (laughs) 600, maybe 400. I'm not sure the exact amount of years. (laughs) Okay. That's not a, that's not a big gap at all. You're close. Go on. Yeah. So the Netherlands area was pretty much like underwater (laughs) marsh type of land area. And what they needed to do is like, okay, we got to get rid of all the seawater. So they built, they were they had the wherewithal of like building windmills and developing this system that could carry the water out of the area of land, build dikes high enough by sea level along mm. the shore so that this water can leave and they would like transport this water back to sea from inland using this windmill system. And those windmills that were basically designed and constructed like over 600 years ago are still there and they've been maintained by the country and they're basically like landmarks and you could like walk like walk into like one of them which is like a museum and like just see them as they were hundreds of years ago in order to make that land what the land is today and it's actually really cool from that perspective sure i love i love historical stuff like that do they have a gift shop inside the windmill that sells mini windmills? Uh, <laughs> there is a gift shop at the entrance <laughs> of when you're going into the town of Kinderdijk, but yeah. there is no gift shop inside the oh, windmill. Come on, Kinderdijk. you got to capitalize on that. I know, right? You're the windmill capital of the, the world. Netherlands. you yeah. got to do <laughs> Exactly. Of something. Of at least the Netherlands, so you've yeah. got to take advantage of that. Yeah, so, that's, uh, so that was okay. really cool to see. Um while we were doing all of the other Filbapalooza stuff. Sure, um, sure. And then the second coolest town that we went to was the town of Gouda. And if you're a cheese lover, right. you're, you're, you're immediately going to know what, what has come from the town of Gouda, which is Gouda cheese. So mm. if you like Gouda cheese, there's nothing better than going to this town, going to the center market, and walking into this giant market that's filled with pretty much cheese and cheese, uh, other yeah. types of like meat filled cheese and cheese yeah. covered this and all this other stuff. So it's really cool to just go check out this town that is very, very proud of the fact that they have invented Gouda uh, to the world and have uh, basically have their center city area. Uh, proudly selling various types of cheeses. So yeah, it reminds it, me of the time when I was a boy and I went to Pepper Jack, Indiana. It was <laughs> yes, that, that sounds it's a good time in its own right. Cool. So a lot of so you visited. Um, sounds like a, a lot of cool cities. I'm sure there's plenty of pictures. I already saw some yeah. online of uh, of that. So pretty cool, man. Uh, awesome. Uh, so let's get back to um, getting back to the Palooza. Yeah. Yeah. What was what was your favorite um, film that you saw there? I know you did a lot of sightseeing and everything, but of the films you saw that w- that weren't ours, uh, <laughs> which uh, which one was your which one was your favorite? Give a give a city or a country a shout out. Which one did you like? So we didn't see as many as we normally see, but we did go. I Rula and I did go to a couple screenings. I want to say the total that we saw of the screenings was four screenings. Oh, and, wow. and, that's a lot of films though. Yeah, that's yeah. about, that's at least what, 10 films per screening. So yeah, so it was about 40, to roughly 40, 40 short films yeah. so between 40 and 50 short films. That's yep. pretty good. Yep. Um, <laughs> fam- my, the fa- favorite of the screenings. Mm. I keep on bringing this one up. It was, it was Tokyo's yes. film. 
They're always good. It was so, so Every damn time fun. I've gone, they kill it. Yeah, okay, yeah. what they do? It was this really fun uh, espionage type of film where the, the uh, it, it opens up with uh, this scene on a rooftop in the middle of Tokyo, and the woman is drugging her boss and <laughs> uh, with a uh, true serum, uh, getting him to tell the truth. And it turns out that her family had uh, also been uh, part of like a, uh, uh, I, I'm going to say CIA, but whatever Japan's, um, you know, CIA equivalent uh, type of uh, agents would be. Uh, her, her her family members were that that type of uh, 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 family, and it became this weird twist where she ended up drugging the man that she loved uh, just to get the truth out of him. And that's the thing about these movies is like, it's always good to tie in either love, hate or fear into the storyline. And they went this line of like, she's in love with the guy that she's been tailing. And now they, uh, they decide to go off and, uh, and be together because of this weird crazy little situation it's so premise. yeah fun so premise. And, and i think tough to pull off in these seven minute maximum a lot yeah, of time right yeah, so yeah, it's impressive exactly that's, that's, tokyo's always I mean they're they're one of the cities that i feel just they just bring it every time yeah so good um there's a lot of cities that can say that but i don't know tokyo stands out to me uh i always love them i always um you know, I always think uh, Rome is another one. They always, they always yes. seem to bring it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, man. Uh, if you ever have a chance <laughs> to go to an international film festival, do it because uh, what we see here in the states, um, you know, is 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 really a fraction of of the total amazing films that are that are out there. Actually, the the Oscars is a perfect example of that this this year because yeah. Parasite, Parasite kicked ass. It cleaned up and first um, foreign film to do that to you know to win best international film and best picture. So uh, I think that's pretty wild. Yep. Um, and maybe that's good. Maybe we are moving in in that direction uh, as far as that's concerned. Where we where we don't as a director. Director uh, Bong Joon said, uh, "We don't let that uh, subtitle get, or, you know, the the, uh, mm-hmm. the text at the bottom get in the way." He said yeah. it much more poetically, but you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying the uh, the yeah. closed caption thing, right? So, um, you know that 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 should be uh, that should be noted. That's fun, awesome, man. Well, I'm glad uh, I'm glad that you got to see. That's still a lot of films. I mean, between 40 and 50 is uh, pretty darn good. Well, but- um, that's good. But I will yep. say, okay, so those were the screenings. We saw about 40, 48 films during the screenings. But mm-hmm. I will admit, uh, and, and Bill, you've, you've been there where it's like usually the screenings that we saw, we saw at least one or two, maybe even three, that made it to the final 12 that were going to Cannes. I don't yes. think any of the ones from the screenings that I saw made it to the selection of Cannes. And wow. on a further note – the ones that made it to Cannes, holy shit, dude! Uh, I want to say my my favorite, my favorite one of the ones that went to Cannes. I can't remember the exact city that it was, but it was this really cool story where it's just like it opens up with the scene of this couple. I'm not even gonna say couple. It opens up with the scene of this man and woman going onto a subway train, and the one guy is playing a cop and he sees this woman pickpocket someone and he catches her and tells her don't do it without saying anything. He kind of like, you know, like says like, no, 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 like waving his finger. And she ends up pickpocketing someone else. Uh, long story short, um, they get to a stop. She pretends as if he is picked pocketing the person and jumps off the train really quick and and he chases after and it's this whole chasing and it's done in such a beautiful comical way where you could kind of tell like hey this guy is into this girl even though he's a cop and she's a thief and then they end up 
leaving the train station, going down an alley, get like, and then it gets like racy where it's like she lures him down an alley. They end up having sex and they don't even show anything, but it's implied. One of the situations. And then it's like fade to black, cut to man cop goes home, (laughs) goes into the kitchen. I just, I just love that. Yeah. Man cop. That needs to be a movie. You need to write that movie. (laughs) Man cop goes home. Half man, half cop. Goes, man cop. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he goes home, goes into his kitchen, and there's the woman that he just had this weird scenario with. And she's at the ki- she's at the sink. There's a child sitting at the table. It's clearly like it's his wife. They have a child mm. together. They were role playing in public. Oh my gosh! And it just cuts to this beautiful scene of that was their way of making their relationship play, spicing it up, spicing it up. And it was done Fun. such a subtle way, and, and, and it's just like, God damn it! Some of these European filmmakers are just so good at telling a beautiful story where it's, and it's like, you don't even have to have a lot of dialogue. You don't even have to have a lot of like chaos happening. It's just like, they're just telling a sweet story without much going on. And it's just like the actions are telling the story alone. And it's just like, wow, that was a really good story. And I want to say that was, I don't think that was the one that won. That might've been the one that, no, that wasn't the one that won best film, but it was one of the ones that like did really, really well during during cool. film Palooza. So, um, like I said, always impressive film work, always really cool to see what other filmmakers, particularly in Europe, are doing when they tell stories, especially in that seven minute time frame. Yeah, and it was just really cool to see all the other film work. Awesome. So, uh, what, uh, what else? We're at about, uh, looks like a little over a half hour in here. Yeah. Um, should we, uh, should we tell people what's going on with uh, with Kick Rock and uh, what we got coming around the corner during, <laughs> during, during this hiatus? We haven't we haven't uh, put anything out there in a little bit, but we do have we do have some things. We got a couple podcasts. Uh, this one is just uh, what are we going to title this one, Serge? Just Bill and Sergio ramble on. We don't really have a topic today. We're just going at it. A rambling catch up. I don't know if that. I like it. That, a rambling catch up. Yeah. You know. Love in the time of Corona. I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. It's up. Yeah. It's up to you. It's up yeah. to you. It's, yes. You know, titles are whatever. We'll figure uh, it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But um, yeah, man. I think. Uh, well, what we do need to do definitely is, um, since now we have uh, the uh, ability to do this remotely, we we should. Uh, I think we should definitely do a, a favorite pandemic uh, <laughs> or like favorite. Uh, um, uh, end of the world uh, movie, I yeah. think would be fun to do. I think uh, maybe I, maybe favorite and least favorite. I think uh, the other guys would be on board with that too. We can get them in and do a fun podcast about that. I'm already off the top of my head. I'm thinking of uh, just a bunch of films that you know. I guess I just like, but I I never really thought of them. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a kind of a pandemic or a end of the world story. You know, you just you know, there's some really great ones out there. I think if we uh, put our heads together, we can come up with some good ones. Uh, maybe some that people haven't seen, which I always love doing. I love when we talk about ones that uh, maybe make people go and uh, watch them for the first time. That's always fun to do. I think that's a great idea, and I think we should make that our next, uh, our All next right. podcast. So. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, until then, I think, uh, I think that's going to do it for this episode. We had a nice little catch up here. Uh, Sergio, it was a lot of fun. I loved hearing um, all about uh, the trip. And I know there's probably so much more, too, uh, and hearing about uh, Filmapalooza as well. Uh, so that was fun. We're glad that uh, you and Tony and uh, and uh, the girls got home. Jess and Rula got home safe uh, with you guys, and you, you landed in the States before uh, – before everything got a little crazy here. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, man, uh, you know, stay safe. Uh, keep doing what you're doing and uh, we'll, we'll catch up, uh, you know, together. And, and with all of you listening, we'll catch up uh, sometime soon. And you guys all stay safe as well. Thank you very much for tuning in. Serge, um, Tony's not here. Do you <laughs> want to, 
I don't think you've ever taken us out. Do you want to try it? No, I do. Come not, on. I, I think you're in like the mood to, to do it. You don't want to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm going to leave that up All to right. you. I'll try it. I'll just try to, let me get, let me get in my Tony voice here. Uh, <laughs> uh, this has been uh, I can't do it. That's why he does it. See, it's not even that good. Anyway. Um, man, he's going to hit me for that one when he sees me in six months or whenever it's going to be. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> who knows? All right, everybody stay safe. Uh, cheers, Serge. I'll talk to you later, buddy. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Two Drink Minimum. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, remember to like and subscribe to our podcast. Listen to it, download it on iTunes, Spotify, your favorite podcast mediums. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. It really means a lot to us. And please remember to stay safe out there during all this, uh, and hopefully it will pass soon. So this has been Two Drink Minimum. We've been drinking, thinking, and talking shop. Cheers, everybody. (laughs) 